Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Healing Tide 2.0, featured on the Whole Care Network and UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. I'm your host and presenter, Christopher McClellan. You just might know me as the Bowtie Guy. On this episode of Healing Ties, I am excited to introduce you to my new friend and awesome caregiver, Susie Singer Carter. Susie is a writer, director, producer who has an intense passion for projects that emphasize girl power of all kinds and for all ages. Susie's critically acclaimed film, my Mom and the Girl is based on her true story of caring for her mom. It is a heartwarming, uplifting film that gives an unexpected and joyous look at Alzheimer's diversity and caring. I know you are going to love my conversation with Susie as much as I did. And we'll see you on the other side of the podcast with information on how you can view Susie's film, My Mom and the Girl. Please enjoy my conversation with Susie Singer-Carter. Well, greetings, Susie. It is such a thrill to have you on this episode of Healing Ties. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm so I'm 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 so thrilled to be here. Well, we were introduced by mutual friend Judy. Um, I was going to say Cornish. Some, <laughs> Judy Cornish. <laughs> I had another Judy in my mind, but Judy Cornish. And it's kind of like with, same with Judy and with you. We had the conversation, first conversation. It's like instant friends. Yes. We yep. just connected. You know why? Because we're we have the same. We're cut from the same cloth, right? We we're both we the have this. Yeah, yeah, we knew it. You can tell we we're here. We, we care. We 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 we're we're here to live whatever we can live, and that's it. And we're going to right. live it the best we can. Yeah, and while and while I know a little bit about you, as I do with all my guests, so Susie, tell us how are you creating healing ties? Good question. And I love the title of your show because it's very, very yeah, appropriate, on point. And um, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to create healing ties in a lot of ways. And I didn't know I would be so involved in trying to create healing ties. But once you once you dip your toe, whether you like mm -hmm. it or not, into this community, you know, if you have if if you're smart at all you realize how rewarding it is and, 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 and how, how important it is and how much we need to be there for the people that we love and, and for our community at large, which sounds really altruistic, but it's true. It's and true. I've, I've never been more fulfilled. You know, I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm a director, I'm an actress. I, I, love, I love telling stories, but I love telling stories that matter. And so... You know, if even if it's a silly comedy, it it has to say something for me. Otherwise, I'm I feel like I'm wasting my time and everyone else's. So, you know, when my my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's almost 15 years ago, and she's wow. still with us, and um, I didn't know anything about it at all. So mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about it other than you know I think I met a couple of my mom's friends' mothers who had it. And, mm -hmm. you know, all I knew is that they kept saying to me, and your name is, mm -hmm. and I would say, right. <laughs> right? And then, and I, you know, I would look at my mom and she'd go, that's my daughter, Susie. And I started to learn about, you know, what happens a little bit. But when my mom got it, it was, uh, it was devastating because this is my best friend. And I watched her go through this journey. I'm watching her still go through the journey. And I realized that it wasn't just about, me it was about us and about the family right right yeah. Yeah. and so i uh i guess the way that i decided was to to take what i had learned in my journey which was a hell of a lot at that point and about four years ago i decided to make a short film about my mom called my mom and the girl and i did it not because the world needed another alzheimer's film but because i thought that i had landed on a, on a really good way right. to, to look at it and reframe it and reframe this disease, which was to find the gems, find the gold in the journey, enjoy the life since it's a, it can be a very long disease. Exactly. 
and my mom's had it for a very long time. So to wrap my head around her living this long with this disease, I wanted to find a way to make it as, as enriching, as, as beautiful as it could be with the skills that she still has. And right. so, and, yeah. and, and by sharing the story, and one of the things that I, I just know we connect on, it's through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate on a common cause. Two people who do have nothing in common personally or professionally, but you find out that they're caring for somebody that has Alzheimer's or cancer or they're in a caregiving role. They have that instant connection. Yes. And then they understand each other without even knowing each other. Exactly. It's a haiku, I call it. It's haiku. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, right? Yeah, it's right. a shorthand. It's a shorthand that we all get. And um, and I noticed that. And this is what I noticed, Chris, when I, when I did the film, I decided I wanted to make what I called a joyous look at Alzheimer's because I decided that oh, was okay. the way I was going to embrace it. Mm -hmm. And go, you know, we took the film to the festivals circuit in, you know, if you're not in the industry, but probably everybody knows a little bit about the festivals, you know, you right. screen your film in front of audiences all over the world. We were in Australia and we went to, to Cannes, you know, so we we're in France and, and, um, I mean, it's screened in, in Korea. Can you believe that? Wow. And, um, Yeah. And people, but, but the places I was fortunate, fortunate enough to go and be there in front of the audience, people afterwards were so moved and so, and I don't mean just moved emotionally, like there was a shift. There was a mm -hmm. shift and it was like, oh, you, you told my story, even if it was a teenager about her grandma or a husband about his wife or a wife about her or a, or a woman about her father or whatever it was, it was I hugged more strangers in that year that that weren't <laughs> strangers. If that, if you can wrap your head around that, and right. cried and cried with them, and they said, "You told the story the right way," <laughs> you know, and that right. that we get it and thank you. So I thought, you know, that felt so good to me. And when my um, journey, my festival journey ended, I thought I need to keep this conversation going. So I started a podcast called I Love, I called, I love, called Love Conquers Alls well, love as a labor alls. of love. Yep. As a, as a labor of love and really just to have a place to keep communicating the positive and the way, and it's not, you know, I know you know this and your audience knows this, but you know, it took me a long time to really realize that it's not just hy hyperbole. It's not to say that, you know, look for the, the silver lining. There really is a silver lining. There really, really there is. Because, oh my goodness, there's just <laughs> so many ways that we connect, but there is a silver lining in all of this. Because, you know, caregiving, uh, dementia, Alzheimer's, it's just not a local issue. It's a global issue. Yeah. And, and all the, these stories are, are everywhere. And people understand it. And they're better prepared be, because of folks like you who have who are sharing the story they, they get the resources they they understand they're not alone exactly you know and i know that ever you know most people i mean hopefully one day they, they'll there won't be this but there there is a stigma even you know it, it's not just alzheimer's it's anything even autism you know my my girlfriend who has three children with autism and, you know, wow. the way that they, they, you know, renaming, just renaming this condition from, you know, on the spectrum to exceptional, because they mm. are exceptional. They're just exceptionally different in a way, but, but you know, than, than we're used to it, the norm. They're actually above average because they're awesome and they, and they have the ability to you know, micro focus on, on things and really m change the world in ways that most of us that are considered normal, we're just, you know, we're, we're like, we're like, you know, the dog and up squirrel, That's you right. know, <laughs> <What>? <laughs> different, different is not bad. Different can be good. Different is terrific. Right. Different is phenomenal. You know, 
I think a lot of us, I, I, I raised two daughters and, you know, I watched them go through middle school. I've been through middle school as a, as a woman, as a girl, mm -hmm. and there's nothing more frightening than that in the world. I'm telling you, you can, <laughs> there's nothing I don't want to go back. No, <laughs> it is, it is horrific. And I remember thinking like, wow, like when my daughter asked me, said she needed a certain pair of Converse, I was like, got your back. I get it. Because you have to, there's a part of your, your development where you have to fit in for, for, for this, for your develop. There's there, you just need to be able to know that you fit in. And then that's once you can fit in, then you can walk away and embrace your, your differences. And, and those differences are, are, are who you are. That's who you are. The differences are who you are. Yeah. yeah. Good enough. And that's what that's makes very you powerful. right. Powerful. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it really is, and it's you know, it just it's it's beautiful. It's 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 something that I subscribe to now, and it's hard. Listen, we all want to just you know, we want to fit in, and we want everyone to go. We oh, fit look. in. We want to we yeah. want to be perfect. We want mm -hmm. we want to say the right things, but uh, yeah. Sometimes this we could just be ourselves. It's actually not sometimes all the times if we're just all the time being, being ourselves it's okay it's more than okay you know i i often i my one of my epiphanies is that you know alzheimer's and dementia and aging in general becomes it's a really it's it's really like benjamin button that you go from you know right. like like little children go are mm -hmm. developing upwards well you know our elders are developing and walking backwards out the door in a way and losing everything, everything that they socially learned and all that stuff, which children have to socially learn. So right. at one point they meet, you know, and both of them have no filters and both of them are just <laughs> yes. right. And they, and they teach you so much. Like my children taught me so much. It's like, you know, sometimes we think, why wasn't I invited? But a child doesn't say, say that they go, can I come? Can I come too? Can I come too? Why yeah. can't? That's right. It's unfiltered. It's unfiltered. And sometimes you, you hear, oh, sure. Or, you know, we really can't. We're like, oh, okay, next. Right? And that's what happens with, you know, like I watched my mom and, and all of the people in her community that are going through, you know, living with dementia, living with Alzheimer's. It's, 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 part, of, it's part of it. And, and it's beautiful because it's truth. Mm -hmm. it's truth so it if someone true. says look at that girl that you know my mom would say wow that person's got a big tush and i'd go mom uh they can hear you what it's that i'm just it's, saying i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> I, I would be mortified in the person that they that, that would have heard i'm telling you nine out of ten times they would turn around and go it don't worry how you doing, Lee? How you doing? You having a good day? Because it comes from such a pure, there was nothing mean about nothing, it. There's nothing, nothing mean or malicious. Mm -mm. It's, no, you know, it's just observation. What, they're saying what's on their mind. Observation. 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 Yeah. yeah. So it's beautiful. And um, it's the way we should all be because, you know, we, we live behind all kinds of masks oh. that, don't, that don't fit Goodness. us. Goodness gracious, Saint Ignatius, ain't that the truth? I, 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 I hopefully threw most of my mask <laughs> away a long time ago, but uh, it still pops up from time to time. But uh, well, listen, it's it's not. I can't say it's not fun. Sometimes it's fun to put on a mask. I love dressing up. I love Halloween, and I listen. I'm an actress. I love it, playing roles. But when it comes to your relationships, it, you know, and and dealing with people, there's nothing more rewarding than being authentic authentic and and that's one of the one of the great things about your film is that everything in the film is true and real to what has transpired in your year with your mom yes yes yeah so talk about that talk talk about seeing that year with your mom in film and and how that all played out mm -hmm. and then i also want to want you to get into why the name of the film my mom and in the girl absolutely well you know my my stepfather who was my mom's best friend and he was 12 years older than her and they were living in assisted living and they and together like he was he was 87 when my mom was so what is that 75 my mom 
that was the year that he died. And um, my mom kept saying, when Georgie goes, that's my best friend. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. There's no way. I'm done. Like, that's my best friend. And I would say, mom, hello, daughter here, children, grandchildren, we love you. You have more to live, right? And, um, you know, so, but when he, when he passed, my mom, it was, it was really difficult on her in that having Alzheimer's, she kept going through what I call, what, it was like Groundhog's Day. Where's oh. George? Where's Georgie? And I'd say, Mom, he died. What? Nobody told me. And I over and over and I had the memorial pamphlet that I had made and I would show it to her. And I was determined to move her in with me to walk. I say, you know, hold her hand, walk her over the bridge till she actually could embrace that information and embrace what she was going through because she couldn't do it without me. And I couldn't, it was heartbreaking. I, I knew right. that I was the only one that was going to reach her. And, you know, it took, it took about two weeks until finally she asked me again, where's Georgie? And I just looked at her with all the love I could in my eyes. And she said, he died. I said, yeah, he died, mom. She said, okay. Oh. The last time she asked about him. Wow. So, you know, I felt that was so rewarding for me because everybody else said, just lie to her, tell her that he's out to lunch, wow. tell her, you know, all that. And I said, no, it's cruel. No. I can't. I respect her too much. I know that I'll reach her. I know that it will get in if I just keep gently repeating it, you know. And um, it was a hard year. It was the year that I said I crossed over, she crossed over the bridge and I wanted to be there. There's a certain point in, in, Alzheimer's and different dementias where, you know, you've, the person that has it is fighting tooth and nail right, to hold on to what they're used to. And then when they cross that bridge, it's a beautiful place. It's serenity. It's, it's peacefulness. It's acceptance. Right. And the only thing that's hard about it are, are the, is, is how we as loved ones and caregivers react to what they're going through. So, so that is what I learned in that year was that if I can meet her where she's at, she will be way better and I will be way better and mm. everyone will be way better. Everyone well, you know, that's why I love the metaphor of walking over the bridge. You did it together because it benefited everybody involved in the process. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, there's yeah. no, we, we wish we, and I, I like to use, I wish my caregiving cape, I could snap my caregiving cape and just make everything go away and make it better and make it the way it used it to be. It was, the way it was. We, you know, we just, and I, we, I well. I, I'm with you. I, I, thought, I, Richard, I thought Richard was going to get off, get out of that hospice bed two days before he died and we were going to go home. Christopher, I'm with you. I used to tell my mom, mommy. You have Alzheimer's, but we're gonna kick it. We're gonna we're do. Gonna I'm, I got your back. We're gonna get. We're gonna get you through this, and we're, we we're gonna find get you a through way. it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna. You know, and, because they always got better. Yes. They always got better. They do. They do. It's it's tricky when when a disease lasts long because you know I can't tell you how many phone calls I've gotten in the middle of the night when I go. Okay, this is it. This is it. I'm not going to answer the phone. I can't. I'm. I'm. My breath is. Tough. I'm going to faint. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then right. you get brave, and then you finally call back, and they go, "Oh, your mom fell out of bed, and she's fine, but we had to take her for X-rays." But she's, and you're like, "Okay," <sighs> you know, because you're waiting for that call. Mm -hmm. You know the call. You know the call. That's right. You, you look know at the, the call. It's like, I don't want to take that call, but I have I don't to take to that take call. It. Yeah. And I've been waiting for that call for a long time. I, and I say, part of me says my mom, knowing what a baby I am and how much I love her, is giving me a very long ramp, <laughs> a runway <laughs> to get used to the idea. And um, so for that, I'm grateful. And I'm grateful that, you know, I'm, you know there's, a, there's a point in when you're caregiving where, you, where you as a, as, a, as a partner, Christopher, it's, it's different, but... As a mother daughter, I yeah. I switched roles and became mommy. Right. 
and I embraced those ro it. Those role reversals, they, you know, they do happen. In, and in it's an honor. It's it, an honor. It, oh my God. There, there is no greater honor bestowed on any of us than to care for somebody else, especially at the time when life transitions. We must, we must have been friends for in another life than in, since day <sighs> one, because it's like there's so much synergy here. Right? I know. I know. That's why I say but, it's shorthand. It's shorthand. It's, it's, it's it, you know, listen, I, I grew up in, in, you know, La La Land here. Nobody wants to, to face their mortality, and you know. I've been right. scared to I've been scared to die since I'm three years old. I remember running out of my bed and going to my dad. <laughs> Where do we go when we die? He's like, "Are you kidding me? You got 97 more years. Get mm -hmm. back to bed." And I'd be like, "But I want to know. Like, I don't understand it. Like, what happens? I don't get it. Yeah. You know why? And you know, n nobody wants to embrace it. But then, but honestly, it's it's like Arthur Miller. He there's this, you know, passage from from his one of his plays where he talks about embracing your idiot child. And it's this fear running from this horrible monster in a dream. He kept saying, I have this dream that there was this horrible, ugly child chasing me. And and I was running as fast as I can and I couldn't get away from it. I couldn't get away from it. And I finally in my dream, I turned around and thought I, I can't run anymore. So I embraced it. And the idiot child went away because I realized that the idiot child was me. So when you embrace your idiot child is when you when become you're... whole and when, mm -hmm. you, when you can really live. And it's also, I guess, a sense of um, letting go mm -hmm. and letting in. Yes. Yeah. It's we that can't reality control. of what's in front of you. Yeah. We can't control. <laughs> that word of control oh my god i want to right? control it I, I you know can i control this disease nope we can't you we can control how we do yeah me too me too mm -hmm. it's it is really the narcissism in us a little bit is that you know <laughs> right. right but but yeah. at the end of the day you know all we can do is control how we respond to it exactly because it you know it's a it's a gentle reminder and i know my listeners have heard me say this oftentimes is uh, and Richard and I talked about this. You know, as a caregiver, we're really the co-pilot. You know, we're not the one diagnosed. We don't, you know, we're not the one taking the medicine. We're, we're, uh, we're the co-pilot. And sometimes when we put ourselves in the pilot seat, um, it kind of upsets the apple cart individually right. for ourselves. For yeah. ourselves. And it comes back to that old saying about self-care why it's so important for caregivers to take care of themselves. True that. You know, and I know with you and Richard, you know, be, because he was copus mentis most of the time, right? So you could have those conversations, those right. where, right, whereas when someone who is losing their cognitive ability to communicate in, in a way that's, you know, uh, uh, complex. It, very um, much so. Right? So what you live for are those lucid moments that do come. And they do mm -hmm. come, which I showed in my movie. Oh, where very my, much so. Anna. Yeah. Where and, my mother turns. And actually, to me. there's a lucid moment that I'd like to like to talk to you about that, that sure. happened very early in the in. The, yep. Because it's so me meaningful when your when your mom said you have to put me in a home. Yep. To live your life. She literally said that to me. She literally is exactly how that scene went, is how it how it played out. My mother kept thinking she that she had a baby and it was missing and mm -hmm. stolen and she blamed it on me she didn't understand you know it was confusing everything things were starting to get confusing and then she looked at me and realized i'm her baby right and and that 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 visceral mother that that mother who she is is exactly what which, which would which, which was triggered with the girl in the movie got triggered right. and she looked at me and she said you have to put me in a home you need to live your life Right. And of course, my mom and I, who are always, always live for comedy, I was like, oh, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, that was that that was brilliant the way that uh, that was played out. And, and I, I, I think what as I as I watched that and I thought about all the caregivers out there who are trying to make decisions like this uh, and to have your mom say that to you in a very lucid moment it 
uh, it rec it, what it told me was uh, was something that needed to be said, mm -hmm. and there had to. And you, your response about it with the making a kind of a funny response, mm -hmm. but it was very poignant in the sense that we we sometimes we need that permission to do the things that we that we have to do that are hard. And she They're was hard. giving you that permission. She was absolutely giving me that permission. And and we need that. We need that. <laughs> and you know, and, and, and you're so right. It's like I have a stepson in London who has been a caregiver for his mother who's my age for years. And she's, you know, that's a whole other story. But he wrote such a beautiful short story that is, will make a really nice movie. But it's about him allowing her to have her journey, whatever it is. He couldn't change who she was, so he had to just, he couldn't save her. Mm. And so he had to let go of his expectations and allow her to live the only way that she could. And that's how we all have to do. Because life is short, and so <clears throat> if we want to be able to love and have some quality time with the people that we love, we have to meet them where they're at. We can't force them to meet us. Oh, that's beautifully said because that's oftentimes in the midst of it we we try to we turn the roles around. Well, you need to be where I'm at, not where I need to be where you're at. Right, and you know it's 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 a it's a, it's life is like a teeter totter. So sometimes we're up and sometimes we're down, and we will be there. We're all going to be there. Mm -hmm. God God willing, right? Yes. We're all going to be there. You know, Valerie Harper, if you don't know who she is, you must because she's you one must, of the special. You must. You have to know Valerie Harper. She was one of the most special human beings that this world created. And, um, you know, here's a woman that was diagnosed with brain cancer eight years before she did my movie and had was given a three month life sentence, basically. And she said, I don't think it's going to happen. If it does, we all go in there. She just said, but I'm not going to go to my funeral before I'm ready. And eight oh, years later. Now, ain't that, that is a classic line. I'm not going to my funeral until I'm ready. Nope. And she, and, and she lived, she walked the talk. She was such a generous, lovely, mm -hmm. authentic human being. And that when she, you know, she read my script and she just had to do it. I don't know if she thought, knew it would be her last job I don't know all I know is she left a gift for everybody that was so important her performance is brilliant off the charts and uh, yeah. and as I I've, I've read that was that was her last performance it, indeed it was and I'm honored and you know I, I will cry because I love her so much I cannot tell you this woman I've just she is she embodied my mother she w had to meet my mom they sat together and sang for two hours, kissing and hugging, holding hands like they were sisters. I don't know if you got to watch the credits, but didn't weren't they like peas in a pod? Very peas in a pod. And, peas and in a pod. It, it was. She, this was supposed to happen. It was day. supposed to happen. When she met me, she said, just like my mom would, oh, you're gorgeous. Let me put your hair, move your hair out of your face so I can see you. Mm -hmm. Ah, there you are. Oh, and look at your partner. Now that's a partner. <laughs> like, that, oh, yeah. like, <laughs> she just was my mom, my partner. And I looked at each other and said, that's your mom, you know, and, and generous to an amazing degree. Like we would be on a red carpet. People didn't know me. They want to talk to Val. Valerie said, oh, 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 no, 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 you need to talk to Susie. She, <laughs> she, I she does everything. I, you write. I saw that in one she, of the interviews. Did you? Straight. She writes, yeah. she directs, yeah. she acts, she produces, <laughs> she does everything. She looks like a Tootsie, but she's not. <laughs> <laughs> what an honor it must have been to work with her. Goodness. It was an honor, and, and I, you know, listen, I can't say anything more about her. She just, you know, what, what a, what a humane and human person, you know, I didn't even know until her funeral what a, what, what a charitable and altruistic, per, altruistic person she was in terms of just giving of her time. I mean, she, mm -hmm. she raised so much money for feeding the children around the world. You didn't hear about it. Didn't we didn't know. It. Didn't hear she, about it. She was Millions. A, she and, a, yeah. She's the real deal. She walked the talk. Yeah. 
And you, you, you actually, you, you, you kind of tipped my cat here on a, my cat, my, my cap here in a second because I, you were talking about singing. And, yes. and there was a couple of scenes in the in the film, especially the scene in the bus where your yeah. where, where your mom and Val, uh, Valerie is singing to the man who's standing up. Yes. And and then they were as your the scene around the dinner table at the caregiver's home. Yes. Maybe your 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 mom started to get a little frustrated, and the man reached out and and started to reminded her about a song. Yes. And, and and how the moods just change. And I think those are those are important tools for caregivers to kind of recognize mm-hmm. it because there there are ways to diffuse uh, difficult situations mm-hmm. when you're dealing with somebody that has that has dementia. And that was a per- those were two perfect examples of how yes. that how the mood changed and and whatever was in her mind was able to go away because the conversation was redirected to something. Redirected. Else. Exactly. Like you do with, you know, and I'm not, and it, this isn't a disrespectful analogy, but like you do with children, because when the cognitive, certain cognitive abilities go away or they get, they get, you know, when, when <clears throat> synapses get me, you know, mixed up, you know, it's, it's, you need to be able to, address it in a way that helps it not, right. you know, makes it wor- or, you know, fumes it, right? You don't want to do that. You, you don't, don't want, want to escalate. You don't want to escalate it. No, because they're, you know, that at that moment, they're just, it's like, it's like anything. If you're going through a trauma, you're not really being yourself for a second and that's okay. It's normal. So we just have to do that. And what's interesting that I learned so much from Rolanda, our caregiver, who really was part of the family. Right. From before, that's how my that's how we knew her, and that's why my mother loved her, and and they be, they became she became her best friend, and Erlanda was just a natural at being a caregiver, and you remember the police scene, right? Oh yeah, that was <laughs> that happened several that was a times. Class, I can I can imagine that must have happened several times. And she was so canny about it because she told me so many stories, and I said, you know, you are really an angel. This is a woman, she didn't go to school for caregiving or, you know, she just was a human being and understood like there were one time they got pulled over because my mom was like pull, calling out, calling a cop car, come over here. This woman mm-hmm. is crazy. She's chasing me. And Erlanda tried to tell the man, you know, the police, listen, I'm her caregiver. They, they don't know because our first responders aren't educated in this. So she said, please yeah. give me, please give me one minute. She walked away around the corner, waited about one minute and came back. And my mom turned around and said, Erlanda, where have you been? I've been looking for you. She knew she just she needed knew. to change it up. She and needed my, to change. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's the, just, and the, the, the other really important tip uh, and, uh, that I saw in, in the exchange with the police is when Yolanda pulled out her phone. Yes. And showed a picture to the police. Mm-hmm. with your mom and her mm-hmm. because it, it, as you just said first responders are you know they're often not uh, they're not trained they're not they've trained not to, dealt to... with this before and no. you know you're you're dealing with somebody that looks like they're they're uh uh all there but when yep. they're you know they're struggling with a diagnosis uh, and I, I just thought that was so brilliant the way she picked up the phone, picked out her phone, and, and showed the picture to the police. Right. That that de- that that could have a way of de-escalating so many situations yes. that go out that that get well exasperated. You know, exa- exa- yeah. Exasperated. And do we have time for me to tell you a quick story? Oh, we have we have all day. Okay. <laughs> Well, we'll have to order luncheon. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> no, when when and this is why I it was important for me to make the film as well because of those kinds of situations where for, it's not just first responders; it's even our medical community. And mm-hmm. if it's not their specialty, they they are also not aware and and aren't taught the you know how to recognize those kinds mm-hmm. of situations. So. When my mother, when she did move into an assisted living and 
one afternoon when they were taking her to a doctor's appointment, she got agitated because she was disoriented. She didn't know where she was. And when they get disoriented, you get frightened and you have anxiety and it builds. And by the time she got to the, the hospital to check in, they thought she was uh, she knew that she had a, a mental breakdown and that she was, you know, needed to be locked up in an, in, in their, you know, mental in, in, in their psych ward, sure, in their psych ward, mm -hmm. which they did. <clears throat> and I didn't get a call for some reason until the next day when I went in to see her, she was tethered to a chair. Now my mom right. didn't need to be tethered to a chair. My mother was fully mobile. She could walk five miles a day. She was in physically wonderful shape. She was zombied out. I thought she was dying. She had, it was, they had her drugged up on a drug they called had, Dep Depakote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, the doctor that admitted her went on vacation for a long <laughs> weekend. And he's the only one that could he, you know, release. Yeah. So nine days later, my mother never left. After she got out, she never left the wheelchair and was incontinent. And that's the last she ever walked. So, and that's oh. all because of them mistaking her. Mistaking for, her. Yeah, for being psychologically unsound as opposed to having dementia. And, and goodness, I, I think this is going to come out correctly, but you can't make this stuff up. Nope. You, 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 I know you're a writer and producer. and direct, you, The reality is you can't make, because you just don't believe those things can happen, but but they do. They happen too often. They happen too, too often. often. There's too often. gobs and gobs of stories out there about people uh, like your mom mm -hmm. who have been, who are engaging with somebody who they don't know, whether it's on the, the legal side or whatever, and all of a sudden they find themselves in a medical situation that is so inappropriate, and look what happens. Yes. And that's why we're doing what we're doing so that we can help others right. and, that are coming after us that are right. dealing with I'm, some of these same absolutely issues. because i didn't know and you know so if i can if i can at least enlighten other people because i didn't i literally tried when i was trying to deal with my mom and we had you know like a lot of families do we had uh <laughs> you know we had family issues where you know a lot of people you there's a lot of times it happens that there's one caregiver and everybody else turns their back and right. it's not unusual. You know, it, 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 it's not, it's not the only scenario, but it does happen a lot mm -hmm. because not everybody can face being a caregiver right. or, and if, a, or, or don't have the tools to do it. Right. And, um, and money causes big problems too. Oh, so, yes. you know, and so <laughs> when money is involved, you find out the true, <laughs> the true nature of a lot of people. And sometimes it's a big old disappointment. So, you know, and, um, a lot of, a lot of people that have dementia and, um, Alzheimer's, they will, they're, they are abused financially. Right. And it's easy to Taking do. advantage of. Right. It's there's a, super easy to do. There's a line that I always like to use and maybe I'll get in, <laughs> get a comment or two about this, but where there's a will, there's a relative. So, <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Well, and I think on that note, this is a really a great time for us to take our break. So, but you know, Susie, when, when we come back, I'm going to want to know one fun fact about you that we haven't talked about, and I know our listeners are going to want to know about you. So you have to put your uh, cap on. Okay. okay. Okay, so you're listening to... Healing Ties, featured on the Whole Care Network and UK Health Radio, the world's number one talk health radio. We'll be right back. Hey, it's uh, Christopher McClellan. You just might know me as the Bowtie Guy on Healing Ties 2.0. On Healing Ties, we visit with people from all over the globe who share their stories because it's through story sharing where diversity meets the road to collaborate in a common cause. And if you'd like to share your story on Healing Ties, email me direct at thebowtieguy at healingties.com. We would love to share your story to your health, happiness, and prosperity.
Well, welcome back, everybody. I'm continuing my delightful conversation with my new friend, writer, director, producer, actress, uh, Susie <laughs> Singer Carter. Susie, welcome back. Um, I'm happy to be here again. I'm well, still happy you. to be here. <laughs> I'm still, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we just kind of took a little bit of a break, but that's all. Gave yeah. you some, I gave you some time to think about. We're just, uh, you know, we're having a delightful conversation, but I want to lighten it up just a little bit. And I want to know one fun fact about you. Okay. Yeah, everybody's right. on the edge of their seats waiting to hear. Okay. Well, I guess I, I think if someone asked me what my, my fun fact is, I would say uh, when I was um, 19, I was in a girl group called Two Chicks, which was produced by the very, very famous, uh, very prolific uh, showrunner, producer, TV producer, Chuck Lorre. And, oh, um, okay. I yeah, know that name. you know, mm -hmm. sure of two and a half men and of, you know, mm -hmm. Kaminsky method and you name, if it's, if it's a comedy, it's Chuck Lorre's. I mean, right. he's just the most prolific. He's turned out to be the most prolific person ever. But when I was 19, he was, a, a he was a, you know, a, a blossoming music producer and found me and my partner at the time and decided to produce us and we uh we did a huge uh like a very 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 typical 80s uh video to a song called bad dreams in hollywood <laughs> i'll say yeah. don't google it but google it because it, you'll Good. just you'll laugh because it, it couldn't be more <laughs> bad, dreams <laughs> just, in hollywood. bad dreams in hollywood it's it's it was a very it was for, at the time such a high budget we thought we're gonna get superstars and um you know things happen we actually did a we recorded a song called uh french kissing in the usa that he wrote for us and then when our our whole thing imploded uh blondie came out and that was back she had a, a her comeback and that was her song and the oh comeback my. which was french kissing in the usa but we did the original and i ended up getting to work with her and we i we had that conversation she was so lovely and gracious and she said oh i loved your version it was so good so it was you know we had a lot of fun i was a little bit of a pop star for a while we were on rhino records and they call us mm -hmm. the, the best thing since uh, the post go goes so we had a little little fun of being a pop star for a while and it was a blast well, that was a great fun fact thank you for saying <laughs> that. we got to sure. meet blondie goodness that's a, yeah that, that, that in and of itself is is awesome. And, is a uh, kick, yeah. Uh, you know, it kind of brings me to another comment that um, that I have taken from from your wonderful film. It's it's not you didn't say it was easy, but you're saying it was worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This yeah. has all been worth it. Yeah. As hard as it, it is, it is worth it. Yes, and something else that I I want I brought up in my film too on the same in the same um, vein is that when my mom, I was going through a, a, a really hard divorce when my mom moved in with me and I just literally moving homes, divorcing. I had a 16 year old daughter and I have a mom with Alzheimer's and my stepfather just died. Could it be more dramatic? <laughs> <laughs> Could we have more stress? And, um, you know, one of the things my friends who didn't, weren't familiar with Alzheimer's and dementia and said, are you sure you want to move your mom in with your daughter? It's so unfair. You know, it's, it's really hard. And I said, Hmm, I didn't think of that. And, you know, I asked one of my friends who is also a highly respected doctor. And I said, am I doing the wrong thing? And she said, what are you kidding me? You couldn't kidding? be mo being a better role model. Hmm. And I said, okay because i don't want to you know i i was so confused and overwhelmed but a year later when my mom ended up having to go into assisted living my daughter turned to me and said i'm not ready for nanny to go yeah and that, that was in the film that was in the film also and yeah. that year like you said was one of the hardest years of both our lives my mm -hmm. daughter and mine because it's it isn't easy especially the stage my mom was in when they're when you know like i say straddling the fence and they don't you know they want to stay what they were and they're fighting tooth and nail before they're going to lean out into it so we we had a lot of changes to to ride the waves with my daughter and myself and boy 
what a war, what a trooper my mom was, what a trooper my daughter was, what a trooper Erlanda was. And I will pat myself on the back for having survived it. And, and not only survived it, came out a better person. And everybody that was on the road with, on my journey has become a better person. My daughters and, and everybody else. And, it, you and know. what an awesome person you are oh, thank for all you. the work that thank you do. You. So tell our listeners how they can learn more about you, how they can see the film. Like, get get yeah, it yeah. out there. This is, your oh, sure. this is your turn. Oh, please find love. Find um, Love Conquers All. That's my podcast, which, you know, mm -hmm. I'm I, I'm a different voice than Christopher, but we're all of the same voice. So maybe, you know, just if you need listen to Christopher, listen to ours. We're on we're everywhere, just like he is. Um, also, my film is available on um, Apple TV. It's available on I guess it's on PBS still because it's it on plays. it was on my local PBS station yeah, here in yeah. South Florida. So it, yeah. it plays on PBS. We actually won their one of mm -hmm. their awards. So that was an honor. Um, Amazon Prime. Um, if you can't find it, find me on on social media i'm everywhere and i will send you a link because i want you to see it it's it's good it'll make you feel good you'll laugh you'll cry it's a good time for 20 and we'll minutes. also put a link in the show notes for yes. the for the podcast and i'll be appearing on your yes. podcast here real soon yes too, christopher's but... going to be a guest yeah, come see him on our gonna we're going to have a... so much fun yeah. so <laughs> you know susie with the great work that you're doing and the advocacy and the role model that you are demonstrating you are certainly someone who's creating healing ties all around us. I can't thank you enough for spending the time with me today, and I look forward to future conversations and collaborating on with you. You're just, you're, you're a very special human. Thank you. Ah, uh, vice versa. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here, and thank you to everybody that, you know, is part of this community because we can't, we can't do it without you. We're all in this together. Dedicated, fun, and sincere. That's my new and trusted friend, Susie Singer Carter. And be sure to watch uh, My Mom and the Girl and subscribe to Susie and Don's podcast, Love Conquers Alls, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And well, that does it for this episode of Healing Ties. And be sure to subscribe to Healing Ties wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and join us next week as we visit with Amy Whalen from the National Center for Lesbian Rights as we talk about advocacy for LGBT seniors and their caregivers during Pride 2021. As you know, I'm your host and presenter, Christopher McClellan. I've created a life to love after caregiving ends by being with awesome people like you. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye for now.